So now as we continue our look at immunity, we're going to uh, continue our discussion on the mammal innate immunity, and this will be the second part of this discussion. So mammal innate immunity, Roman numeral 2. So what we're going to be focusing on now is, let's say we have a pathogen, and it's evaded the first steps of innate immunity, which were barrier defenses, which were preventing entry into the host. Let's say, unfortunately, a pathogen has entered the host. What does innate immunity do to quickly destroy the pathogen? That's the other side of innate immunity. To initially prevent entry, but let's say that happens, that, does, that already failed. What do we do next? We quickly destroy the pathogen. And this is going to be known as cellular innate defenses. So this is not barrier defenses anymore, but they're now known as cellular. These are internal innate defenses. And these are going to be those defenses that destroy pathogens that have gotten in. And this is what we'll talk about. Destroy pathogens, disease-causing agents that unfortunately got in, but fortunately will be destroyed with these different defense mechanisms. So the best way to understand, most generally speaking, how a cellular innate defense work is one major, major process of immunity altogether. It's something that we briefly discussed and I briefly mentioned um, when we talked about invertebrates, and that's the idea of phagocytosis. It is one of the most important parts of all of innate immunity to successfully be able to undergo and complete phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is when cells ingest pathogens. Now, it's not just any old cells, but specifically cellular innate cells, innate immune cells, when they ingest pathogens, they are going to do a very good job of making sure that they quickly destroy these pathogens that have entered the body already via a process known as phagocytosis. So how does phagocytosis occur within innate immunity? It's very important to recognize that it is a very much, it's a very much uh, highly organized process. Let's take a look at what happens. Initially, what we're going to see in phagocytosis is that you're going to have certain cells of innate immunity that are going to be with what is known as a toll-like receptor. So a toll-like receptor. It's a little bit different than the toll receptor that we saw in insects. These are just known as TLRs. Okay, TLRs, lots of abbreviations when we're studying immunity. Cells with toll-like receptors. These are shown in figure 43.6. So take a look at that once we go over this idea of toll-like receptors. What is this going to do? How is this useful in promoting cells ingesting pathogens via phagocytosis? Well, what happens here is that the toll-like receptor is going to be critical because it, it's going to bind to specific molecules. It's going to bind to a, a molecule of some sort that are characteristic, basically something that defines an organism, a pathogen. A TLR, which is on an immune cell, binds to molecules characteristic of a set. The key word here is a set. This is why it's innate immunity. A set of pathogens, many pathogens, not just one specific one, a set of pathogens that are not normally seen in the own body, that are foreign, in other words, that are not normally seen in own body. So what we have is these cells that are patrolling around the entire body, and they have these TLRs, toll-like receptors, that notice a set of pathogens, a molecule, characteristic of a set of pathogens, and say, hey, that doesn't look normal. What are you doing here? And so what's going to happen specifically, I want to make sure that this is understood, is that they recognize a set of pathogens, not one specific pathogen. So keep that in mind. This is why it's innate immunity. It's a little bit general in this sense. It's not one specific pathogen, not one specific bacteria, but let's say many sets of bacteria, okay? And I'll explain this by looking at an example. I think that's the best way to understand this. So we have these patrolling phagocytic and cellular innate cells that are going to look around and say, hey, whoa, what is that? What's going on here? So take, for example, we have uh, a phagocytic cell that has TLR3, toll-like receptor 3. This is going to recognize um, the following. It's going to recognize and bind to, so to TLR3, which is on our own phagocytic cells that are part of innate immunity binds to what is known as double 
stranded RNA. I want to ask you a question. Have, do we have double-stranded RNA? Absolutely not. So double, RNA is typically single-stranded. Double-stranded RNA is really weird, it's really foreign, and it's actually characteristic of viruses. It's only found in certain viruses. So what do we have here? Take a look at the definition of TLR binding to something. TLR bind to molecules characteristic of a set of pathogens. Certain viruses classify as a set of pathogens because only certain viruses have double-stranded RNA. TLR3 on a phagocytic immune cell says, hey, this is double-stranded RNA. This is kind of weird. I'm going to bind to you and make sure that we get rid of you via phagocytosis. So what you just want to understand about this fact that TLR3 recognizes double-stranded RNA is the fact that we don't have this right? This is foreign. This is not normally seen. We don't have this. What do we have? We have double-stranded DNA. And because we have double-stranded DNA, this is a foreign thing that's characteristic of a set of different viruses called double-stranded RNA viruses that TLR3 will recognize. Again, to really drive home this point of a set of characteristic molecules, take a look at one of the most important TLRs. TLR4 is found on some phagocytic cells that specifically is going to bind bind to what is known as LPS. Remember LPS? That's lipopolysaccharide found in a set of bacteria, a set of bacteria known as gram-negative bacteria. That's the set of pathogens. What's the characteristic molecule? LPS. What does LPS bind to? TLR4. Is that seen in our cells? Absolutely not. LPS is not seen in our cells. It's foreign, and therefore TLR4 as a toll-like receptor will say, hey, this is weird. I'm going to bind to you and make sure that we get rid of you somehow. TLR3 says, hey, this is weird. I'm going to bind to you and make sure we get rid of you somehow. This, again, was also a very important discovery. Same Nobel Prize, 2011, figuring out this as association between TLRs and specific sets of pathogens. So this is very, very recent, these discoveries. Okay, so big deal. We bind to a molecule characteristic of a set of pathogens. What does that mean? I'm supposed to do this. Cells ingest pathogens. How can we possibly do 